Okay, how's everybody doing this evening? I hope you're having a good evening. Of course, my name is Kent, the channel is out San Diego. And I'm here in San Diego. Actually, I'm in Carlsbad. Some of the businesses are starting to open up. In fact, the one right behind me, Barrel Republic, this is the first night I've seen it open since the pandemic started. So it's nice to see those guys open again. So what I want to discuss tonight is I want to discuss uh, the Dan Lammer interviews. I believe he's done four interviews on YouTube. Um, and I want to I want to discuss those those four interviews that he did. Um, as everybody, everybody, not if you've watched my videos in the, in the past month, you know, about a month ago, I asked Dan to come on this channel and start to become more vocal because I thought it would help the project. And that's what I'm more interested in than anything. I'm interested in getting people to know more about EOS, uh, getting some of the information out that I know that they have. Uh, you know, the market is starting to take off a little bit. And I was hoping that uh, uh, Block One and EOS could be a little bit more vocal. And of course, Diane Lammer is the uh, project designer. So the more vocal he is, the more people get excited. I can see the price is starting to, was slumping. I wanted to see more activity. So I was wanting Dan to get excited and get on the internet and start talking about it. And of course I asked him to come on his channel um, and I never heard back from him, but I did. The other thing I did is I went to Block One and I, um, I emailed Block One and asked him I said I wanted to talk to Dan. They emailed me back and they said, uh, the head of developer relations, I believe, person asked me, why would you like, to, what do you want to talk to Dan about? Do you want to talk to Dan about YouTube or do you want to talk to Dan about a technical matter? And I said about YouTube, so I know Dan knows I have a YouTube channel because when Block One referred, uh, emailed me back, they asked me if I wanted to talk to him about YouTube. So I'm sh they, they're, Dan's fully aware of my YouTube channel, but has not come on the YouTube channel and and, and has not responded in any way, shape, or form. In fact, um, when he was an Ivan on tech, somebody even asked him about challenge, and he acted really blank, blank stare. He didn't have any idea what challenge is or have any any uh, any uh, any answers any answers for Ivan, even though people were asking him about that. But anyway, I want to talk about the interview that he had, and I think it was with um, everything he asked. I believe is the name of the channel. Okay, and I want to, first of all, I want to back up to the previous uh, interviews. First, he had a gold and silver channel he was on. Then he was an Ivan in tech. Then he was on a, another guy named Blockworks. I think he does uh, blockchain or does Bitcoin. And then he, and then everything he does. Now, I watched uh, the three other interviews. I didn't watch the everything he does interview because I watched, the, because it was over two hours long. And I watched what Dan had to say previously and it wasn't that interesting to me because he wasn't talking so much about blockchain. He was more talking about reforming society and how, how, you know, the way we elect people in the United States and was not, you know, there was better ways of doing that and it was just boring. I mean, I'm not interested in reforming society. I'm not interested in the election processes. I'm not interested in politics. I'm in, not interested in restructuring how our, our political system works. So when I watched those three other interviews and that's what he was talking about, you know, I thought, I'm not going to stay here and watch another two and a half hours of, of how to re reform the political process here in the United States or any other place. So I didn't watch the main two hour interview, but I watched the post interview. And uh, I'm going to let this train. There we go. They, let, they really let you know they're coming through. When, when a train comes through here, you know about it. They, they don't just do one horn. They, they let that thing go, and, it, and it's never the same. Sometimes it's brief. Sometimes they go on for a long time. But anyway, forget about the train. It's it's all it's past us now. All we're going to hear is a little bit of rumbling. So anyway, I, I didn't watch it, and then I said something about it in one of my videos that I thought because I could kind of tell by uh, the people that came on after the interview that it, it was a little bit of. Uh, you know, their people were a little bit deflated. And, and even at the end when they said, let's do the, I think they say, go EOS thing where everybody pumps their arm. It was kind of a week, go EOS. So I kind of figured that the interview didn't go that great. So I didn't watch it. I just kind of said, oh, yeah. another interview about uh, how we need to revamp the, the American election system. So I didn't watch it. So I made the video, figured it was probably, uh, about a lot of stuff that wasn't that interesting. And I made a video. And then somebody put in the comments of the video, they said, hey, 
you know, you're, you, you didn't watch the video, you, you, and you need to go back and watch the video before you can make any kind of a determination on any case. He's telling me what a great interview it was. This is great, great interview. You need to go watch it. And I said, okay, I'll go watch the interview. So I did. I watched the entire two hours and however many seconds, I think two hours, and maybe it might have been close to three hours. I don't remember. But I watched it, and then I went back and watched parts that I thought were very interesting. And I'm going to talk about a little bit about what he said, because I did think the interview was wor worth watching. And the first thing I would say is that um, Dan um, seems to be getting very regulated minded. So he's very curious, very interested in regulations, uh, uh, including the tax laws. So he spent some time talk to, talking about how Block One is going to have a financial product. We, we, they've done the voice product, the social media product. Now they're going to have a, a, a financial product. But this financial product has got a lot of hurdles to clear because of U.S. tax code and uh, tax code around the world. So unless you get the tax code all uh, figured out, it's going to be very difficult to do anything, uh, which I completely disagree with. And I can give you why I disagree with what he's talking about. In fact, what he's talking about, I think, hurts the project. Not only it hurts the project, it hurts Block One, it hurts the US, and it hurts the investment in the US because um, the tax consequences or the tax issue is not not relevant to this uh, to this what we're doing here. Uh, they're building a blockchain. Uh, it's incumbent upon the IRS and the tax code to keep up with that, not for them to reverse and make sure that they need to go back and make sure they fit all their rules and regulations. The, the rules and regulations need to come forward, not to move backward. So that's what that is. And I also find that kind of disingenuous that it would be so regulated minded, especially when Block One decided to do an ICO that was considered a security where they had to go back and get forgiveness from the Security and Exchange Commission and uh, pay a big fine and um, go through uh, um, some some negotiations with the Security Exchange Commission. So if Dan was so interested in regulations, they would have never done EOS to begin with. EOS would have never happened if if Block One had made up their minds that they were not they were going to comply with regulation before they move forward because they they know they knew they probably knew at the time when they did the ICO and raised four billion dollars that um, they may be in violation of U.S. security and law rules and regulations, so they wouldn't have done it. So for him now to say now that this is gonna encumber or hinder uh, their project, their new uh, financial project, because there could be tax problems, I think it's kind of disingenuous. And I also kind of think it's a little bit negative, and I also think it hurts the project. And I also think that um, it's something that really doesn't have uh, any value. Uh, and I'll tell you why, I'll explain it to you. Um, and I'll give you a little bit of my background. I mean, I don't like to talk about who I am or what I've done. I was a broker, a stockbroker, security exchange. I've been dealt with many times as a broker, a uh, uh, Series 7, Series 63 licensed stockbroker. I've been to law school. Uh, I'm not a lawyer. And uh, I also uh, graduated from uh, university with an accounting degree. I sat for the CPA here in California, but I'm not an accountant. And I like to distance myself from lawyers and accountants as much as possible. So I never tell anybody that because it's not something that uh, that I do or I know everything about. But I do know enough, I think, to have a standing in a conversation like this and talk about it. So technically what Dan is saying that is if you cannot track these 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 um, these these activities on blockchains. So if you can't track every activity, then it's going to be impossible to complete a project. And I would use an analogy, you know, so in other words, so if you if you buy a little bit of Bitcoin and then um, uh, you move it as a wrapped Bitcoin to another chain or exchange it for something else, that if you can't come up with some sort of way of tracking all that, then you're going to run afoul of the IRS. And uh, even by giving away tokens that you could be uh, on the IRS radar list and and if you if you're that you could be uh, you could be uh, they could be calling you up just because you're logging into your voice account and you gotten some free tokens and that could be a liability to you so you can't do it so that they, they think he's completely confused 
I think he needs to go back and talk to his tax attorneys and lawyers because that is not the case. In fact, the matter, you can give away anything you want to give away without any tax consequence. You can give away voice tokens without any tax consequence to the person that's getting the token. Now, the person giving the token may have a, a, con a tax consequence. I think the, uh, the it used to be 10000 I think it's 15000 that you can give away. I don't keep up with those rules and regulations. But there's no tax consequence to giving tokens. We can give you a challenge token, and there's no tax consequence to you for get gifting for getting a token. The other thing, there's there's no taxable event if you are, are um, in cryptocurrency. Um, let's say you're in cryptocurrency and you're uh, you're not you're you're it's 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 not being exchanged or not being exchanged back and forth with uh, with fiat. So in other words, the, the tax consequences become when you interact with fiat currency. So you take Bitcoin and you bring it in and you and you turn it in, 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 into fiat. But you need to keep track of your basis in whatever it is you're doing. So if you buy something, you need to know if it's a, if you have a gain or a loss, you need to keep track of that basis. That's incumbent on, on the taxpayer themselves, not on the blockchain. It's an incumbent on the person that's 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 buying and selling that thing, that that tax consequence, that 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 uh, particular uh, uh, um, that particular uh, investment. That's that, that's 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 incumbent upon the taxpayer, not upon uh, the, the blockchain. Uh, to keep track of it and it's very easy to keep track of you can keep track of it in a ledger you can keep track of it yourself and you need to record those transactions and if you have a, a, a gain a capital gain which is more than a year or an ordinary gain ordinary loss you need to keep track of it i'll give you an analogy why i think this is crazy what dan is saying um if you go into a um a casino and uh, you walk into the casino and you drop five dollars into a slot machine and uh, you lose it. And then you go on to the, another slot machine, you drop another five, 10, $15 in the slot machine, you lose that. And then you go on and you have another slot machine and so on and so forth. Then you go to the roulette table, you, you dump a thousand bucks, you lose that. Then you go to uh, uh, you know uh, uh, play a little blackjack, you lose that money. And then later on in the evening, uh, you hit a thousand dollar jackpot at one of the slot machines. Now, is, 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 are, is the casino keeping track of every transaction? Is the casino making sure that there is some recording of everything that you're gambling that night? Is the casino making sure that they they know exactly what you've done? Is it incumbent on the casino to make sure that uh, they're keeping track of all that transaction? No, that's crazy that the casino would keep track of all this. That's a little bit of like what's going on with blockchain right now. It's not incumbent on blockchain to keep track of every transaction that anybody makes and have that be the responsibility of the blockchain. That's not the responsibility of the blockchain, it's the responsibility of the individual taxpayer, not the blockchain. Now, certainly there are uh, uh, things that uh, people need to do. So in other words, if uh, you know if there's interest income or something like that, then there needs to be a, a document, a, 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 a tax um, um, you know, document given out. Uh, generally, it's a 1099. If you have, uh, you know, and generally that's for independent contractors. But anyway, I could go on into this forever. It's it's complicated. It doesn't make any sense. It has nothing to do with it. With in my in my opinion, so it sounds to me like the Dan's been talking to a lot of lawyers that have just been telling him uh, that that you know this stuff isn't workable, given the current set of us uh, of affairs as far as the. Uh, Current U.S. tax codes and tax codes around the world, which I think is uh, is, is detrimental to the project. So, I, in that respect, I would not, you know. I love this. I love how you doing, man. I love this. You love what? Yeah, talking about. Uh, talk about the blockchain. What's that? I like Bitcoin. I don't really know about blockchain. Oh yeah, it's, it's uh, cryptocurrencies. You like oh, it? Cryptocurrency. Yeah, cryptocurrency. Yeah, no, 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 no. yeah, 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 we're big fans of. It. All right, yeah, cool. Yeah, I want to yeah. I want to learn more about uh, cryptocurrency. Can you tell me? Uh, well, what Bitcoin is is it's something that. Um, um, Instead of having like fiat currencies, which is like your dollar bills in your pocket, this is something that runs on a blockchain. So it runs on a, on on servers around the world that are independent. So it's not it's not um, like it's, it's it's not it's decentralized. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's forex. Like it forex. Yeah. It's like trading. Here, I'll trading. hold this. I'll hold this while you talk to him. Okay. All right now, you tell him. Okay. So so you're in the forex. Yes. What are you trading forex? I trade a couple of currencies. I trade great brand pound, U.S. dollar, okay. New Zealand, uh, U.S. dollar, Japan. So you're all over the world. Yeah, I like to do gold. So, I like gold too. Okay, you know, so, like so, 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 
when you get done with all those trades, what I'm talking about tonight as far as the tax consequences is concerned, how do you know how much taxes you pay on all that trading? Depending on your broker. Okay, so your broker keeps track of all that stuff. Well, your broker, when you sign up, yeah. you, you see that. Okay. Before you sign up. So there's just, there, there, there's, a, there's some sort of a process where they keep track of that for you. Exactly. And that's what I was talking about tonight. Oh, okay. 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 Love that. Okay, brother. Hey, okay. thank you. This is a beautiful time. <laughs> this is Noah Blue. It's EJ. Uh, EJ, and then your name? Kent. Kent. Okay. Hey, thanks, awesome. guys. Kent. Oh, I appreciate sure. you being in the, you, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the... In the... In the... In the... In the... In the... Yeah. See you guys. Have fun. Okay, so just like the man said, there's a way of keeping track of all that. The brokerage keep track of it, but they do as a, as a, as a, as a service to the clients. There's a way to do that. So uh, once again, I think that worrying about tax law, uh, as far as it's concerned, is uh, probably not the best for the project. And and I think more than anything, what Dan is trying to do is 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 be very protective of Block One and their position as far as being able to. They raised four billion dollars. Uh, they're a big target, and and he's going to be the most, uh, 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 probably be the most. Uh, what would you say? <laughs> he doesn't want to expose himself anymore. <laughs> he's got some money coming in. He's he's probably making a pretty good paycheck right now, and uh, he doesn't want Block One to have any problems with any kind of uh, uh, any kind of a governmental agency that can come and and uh, get some money out of him. So <laughs> that's probably why he's saying the thing he said. And plus, he's got a lot of lawyers telling him what to do, and uh, the insulation, and of course, they're probably yeah, uh, they're they're doing a lot of that too. So anyway, I'm not worried about the tax situation. Move forward with the financial project, whatever it is, Block One's doing, because I think it's going to be a great idea. I'm I'm 100% in favor of whatever it is they're doing, because I think what I think what they're going to do is they're going to do some sort of wrap token. It's going to be a financial product with some sort of wrap token in it. Uh, the wrap tokens are great ideas. I love the idea run an Ethereum on the US blockchain through a smart contract, run a BTC, Bitcoin on, on the blockchain with a wrap token mm -hmm. is, a, is an outstanding idea. Uh, he talked a little bit about it. When he starts talking about that kind of stuff, I love Dan's uh, interviews. They're absolutely out, uh, uh, you know, the greatest because he has a very good mind for this stuff. And that's what I would talk about if he come on my channel. I'd talk about that kind of stuff. I'd talk about the more technical stuff. Uh, about uh, how to do wrap a Bitcoin, how to do wrapped EOS, I mean, uh, uh, wrapped Ethereum on, on, on the EOS blockchain, because that is so powerful, and that's where this is going. This is going towards the ability to, to run, the, I mean, the, 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 the problem with Bitcoin and the problem with Ethereum, even though they're doing more better financially right now, tokens are trading much better on the exchanges than, than EOS is because um, EOS has actually has the foundational thing that really is what the blockchain needs, which is the ability to run multiple transactions very quickly. And if you can do that through a wrap token, that's a that's a tremendous idea, and that should be enough right there to tell you that EOS is the token to to invest in, because they can literally wrap, run all these other tokens on their chain at incredible speeds and keep track of all the transactions with the uh, with the with the with the BTC header. Uh, all the hash information that's in the BTC header in the smart contract, keeping track of all the transactions and maintaining the BTC chain within a wrap token on, on, on the EOS blockchain. The only issue I see with that is that you were you're, the custody issue if you're giving up uh, custody. So you have to have a trusted party. And I think he, tr he talked about having a trusted party, which would be like they talked about a trusted oracle. Oracle just being a way to have a, a portal onto the EOS blockchain. So if you had a trusted Oracle that was maintaining custody of this wrap BTC and the wrap ETH, Ether, I mean uh, Ethereum, and you had that and you could have that on the EOS blockchain, you would actually have a more decentralized Bitcoin and a more decentralized e, uh, Ethereum on running on a faster blockchain. So the transaction speeds would be incredible and the fees would be act virtually nothing. So you could fix all of blockchain problems by just running everything on EOS. And that's why I sit here every single night, not every single night, I used to do it every single night. I haven't done it so much here lately because um, because the price has been so depressed and, and you know everybody's been so negative. But this is the kind of reasons why I get excited about EOS. And that's what Dan should be talking about. He should be talking about how this is going to run everything eventually. You know, it's kind of like when you're uh, when you're in a card game, 
you know, and everybody's got a stack of uh, a, a stack of chips. But the one guy over there, you know, he's got the best hand. And if everybody goes all in, he's going to have all the chips. Well, that's the way EOS is. I mean, we're at a poker game and, and we're playing poker with all these other blockchains. But we know we got all the aces. So we know when we got all the aces, all the chips are going to be right around the EOS blockchain. Everybody thinks it's going to be run on an EOS blockchain. That's what we should be talking about. That's where we should be going. That's what Dan should be discussing. Not uh, tax law, not, um, um, you know, how to rearrange the US economy, or US infrastructure, I mean, uh, the United States election system. You know, this is the things that we need to be talking about because this is the thing that's going to drive this price a lot higher. And it's, it's, it's going to drive the price in, higher in a way that, um, you know, uh, the investors are going to get involved. Once the investors get involved, more money gets involved. Once more money gets involved, more more developers get involved, and this is the, this is what makes make things grow. So, you know, we're not, you know, like us with the challenge application. We didn't get a big injection of cash, like Block One d um, did. So we're trying to run on, you know, um, money that, uh, you know, we didn't generate from a big ICO. So uh, yeah, I think Dan could help himself out by being a little more positive, and also by discussing things that. Uh, would help the community a little bit more and I think he wants to do that but I think he also kind of gets a little wrapped up in some of the he has personal belief systems that uh, and like I say I it, it aren't interesting to me and I, I don't think interesting to many other people unless you're in one of the, these libertarian groups and you like that you know and I've done all that been there done that I used to listen to Alex Jones listen to all the stuff read the book creature from Jekyll Island G. Edward Griffin done all that crap stuff I almost said crap, but it's just, to me, it's it's the way it is, and there's just nothing we can do to change it. Just like we, you know, you know, we got a two-party system here in the United States of America. You think you're going to bring that down anytime soon? Lots of luck. I'm, I think I'm twice as old as as, as Dan Lammer, so I heard these arguments when he's probably just was a little boy. Uh, so anyway, I don't know how this video is going to turn out. <laughs> I hope it turns out well. Uh, a lot of stuff was said, and like I said, I did a lot of this from memory because uh, I'm I don't like to use notes because if I'm gonna sit here and read from a script, I might as well just yeah, you know, I just you know, it's not I don't think gonna be I never like people that read from a script because if you read from a script, it's uh, it's like you really don't know this stuff. If it's kind of like anybody can read it, but if you, you sit down here and talk or ad lib like I'm doing, not ad lib, but I actually have to do it from memory, I think you have a lot better interest to, or a lot more knowledge of it if you can do it that way so that's why i do it the way i do it so hopefully you can find this interesting but anyway if dan ever wants to come on his channel i would love to have him i doubt that he will he's had a lot of opportunities to come here and talk with me uh i'd love to do it however you want to do it i'd even fly back to uh, uh to virginia blacksburg virginia if he'd like to do the interview i'll fly back there and, and, and do the interview with him i just like to talk to him um Anything else I want to talk about tonight? This video's probably gone on long enough, so I suppose I can I can wrap it up. But anyway, uh, we'll see if Dan does any more interviews. I hope he does. And I hope he talks about this uh, financial product they got, because I think it's going to be a good one. And I think if they can avoid getting the lawyers to kill the deal, um, they could be uh, they could they, they could be looking for some for a lot higher prices in the future. I appreciate you watching. Thank you very much.